Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conscious Conversion, a weekly podcast about how we bridge the gap between business and spirit, money and meaning, technology and regeneration in a wildly changing world. In a time of so much polarity and uncertainty, this podcast explores how together we're connecting across the planet, across our differences, and across dimensions as we build the new earth together. Thank you so much for being here and for listening. I am your loving and loyal host, Sarah Yemtich. And today I am absolutely delighted as always to introduce you to Bibi. She is a Vita certified love, sex and relationship coach, holistic sexuality, international speaker and conscious living specialist. And she has presented her trailblazing disruptive approach to sexuality and energetic lovemaking throughout the world including events like Mind Valley, Summit LA, YPO forums, and publications like Vogue and Elle magazine. Her heart-opening, taboo-crushing courses create spaces for conversation and plant seeds for the exploration of conscious sexuality. Through her offerings of online courses, workshops, lectures, and one-on-one work in both English and Spanish, she serves clients from around the world in their transformation to both thriving single individuals and loving couples. She's also the wellness director at Nomad Hotel in Tulum, where she creates and curates distinctive holistic programming. And in her free time, she kite surfs, reads books, and explores the world. She just got back from Costa Rica last night to Tulum. (laughs) So we've got that to bond about, among many other things. And I'm just absolutely delighted to have this conversation with you. It's one of the best topics on the planet. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. I love uh, how the podcast thing became a thing now because we literally can just have a chat and hopefully inspire hundreds of people uh, at the same time. So looking forward to this yes. interview. Joy for all involved because we're, I mean, since you are a sexuality coach and specialist, I imagine that's where a lot of the conversation is going to go, but anything's on the table. We can talk about anything, but that's a fun one. Um, yeah. So I'll just start out just to dive in deep from the get-go. Mm-hmm. In this moment on the planet right now in this incarnation of BB, who are you and what is your soul's purpose? Mm. Who am I? I am a woman. I am a a teacher. I'm an inspiration. I am of service. And yeah, my soul's purpose is exactly that being of service, inspiring, bringing more awareness to people's life. And especially when it comes to the topic of sexuality, where we are so really disconnected from its potential and free expression and yeah my passion is especially around women uh, because i can see how patriarchy has really affected the way uh, we live we lead we think of ourselves and how much there is to be discovered and unleashed once we tap into our pussy power but i also work with couples and sometimes with men as well so my sole purpose, being of service, bringing awareness in the topic of uh, conscious sexuality and having everyone have full body energy, heart blowing orgasms. What a amazing purpose to have. I mean, like who doesn't want you to fulfill your destiny on this planet when your purpose is to help everybody have heart opening mind-blowing soul expanding full body (laughs) orgasms yes please help this woman fulfill her purpose (laughs) universe that's amazing how do you how would you define um like what it means to have conscious sexuality Mm. uh it's it's a good question conscious sexuality to me where you are where, where there's an intention where there is uh, an intention of where we what we want to feel where there's awareness of our, our desires our boundaries where we create a safe sacred space for those intention to manifest uh, where we are present in our body where we are aware of our sexual energy where we um 
create an experiences that are not necessarily happening to us, but that we really um, kind of weave into where we decide uh, what we do with this sexual energy. So just, you know, basically having awareness, awareness of your own body, of your own desires, of your own boundaries, of the environment you are in, of the connection you're cultivating with yourself or your partner and with what you want to do with that sexual energy. So, yeah, and I mentioned whenever you were talking about your your purpose, you mentioned the patriarchy and the impact that it has had. And mm -hmm. I don't want to dwell too long on the old mm -hmm. crumbling systems that we want to dismantle or the, mm -hmm. that are that are hopefully falling apart. Um, because really the focus is on what are we wanting to build, but I am really mm -hmm. curious about what your how you would um, describe how patriarchy or what patriarchy has done to sexuality in the last thousands of years especially yeah so i again this is such a huge topic we could probably do another podcast on this <laughs> totally. so i'm just gonna you know i'm going to and even from i always knew there was patriarchy i kind of you know and the concept is there but when i really started to understand how huge um the repercussions of this are especially you know for, for us women is when i started to work with hundreds of women and when i started to see them blossom when i started to see them feel empowered unleashing their voice and owning their desires their dreams with confidence and just you know really be fiercely going through life after they did connect to their sexuality so for me you know there is there is this uh, female sexuality is so powerful so 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 powerful uh that on purpose we are disconnected from that part of ourselves thinking it's shameful uh feeling guilt and then another part to it how what is the best way to disempower us make us believe that we are not enough right so we are bombarded with messages that we are not enough uh from all kind of things you know we are not curvy enough our breasts are not big enough we're not blonde enough we are not too wrinkled we're not this we're not that and there's always hundreds of products or uh, things that we have to purchase that are outside of ourselves so we can feel like maybe now we're gonna be more accepted or we're gonna be more sexy or gonna be more desirable so it's just this constant battle with the fact that we never feel like we are enough so therefore we never feel we're truly empowered and you know, it is interesting because just before we we recorded this uh, podcast, I have, for example, uh, a fifth woman from Saudi Arabia contact me within the last five weeks, probably. And all of them have never, apart from the fact that they feel they are not connected to their body, they feel a lot of shame, they feel a lot of guilt, none of them even had an orgasm in their life. It's consistently repeating, you know, for so many women from one country, right? Because that culture and the religion and etc. influenced them so much that they never were really even feeling safe enough to trust their body. And that then um, really influences the quality of their relationships, how they show up in life, etc., etc. So it's really, really huge. And again, I think, you know, this, I'm just going to share my own experience this because otherwise we could stay on this topic for half an hour. I mean, I I'm, I'm game for wherever this conversation goes, because it's, I, I feel like it's so important to understand. I feel like it's really important because I'm, I'm increasingly understanding the power of sexuality. It mm. is arguably the most important power we have yeah. on the planet that humans yeah. have on this planet. So when we think about like what stamped that out, what powers patriarchy, capitalism, mm -hmm. and then what's behind that? Like what was the motivation of tamping out the most powerful asset, pow like thing that we can, that we have, not just as women, but as, as humans, it's the most power, yeah. it's life force energy. So that got stifled and why? <laughs> well why you know the, i yeah. am i am not the one here to answer this question but partially i basically so women are not as powerful as they could be right you know yeah 
<laughs> so I don't know, doctors, priests, and you know, you name all the professions where men are, you know, leading the way can do things them way, their way, right? But what's interesting to me about that is that we it depends on how we're defining power because men could also have a like so right they they have this power over construct now because they have mm -hmm. because they have tempt out women's sexuality so they can have power over women but i feel like in the new paradigm not only do women have more more power because of not in large part because of their of this sexual awakening mm -hmm. but men actually have more power too because being trapped in a in a toxic capitalistic power over structure isn't really beneficial to anybody. Um, yeah, of course, but they first have to understand that. So if right, you are, exactly. you know, <laughs> <laughs> if you're toxic masculinity, alpha male, I don't know, you know, uh, uh, as I don't know, recent example of Russia leader, right? Um, that's not how he sees that, right? So first there needs to be an awakening on their side to understand that, which is not there. Yeah. So in the new paradigm of, of sexuality mm -hmm. and of conscious sex and relationships, like how, how do you see that transforming um, our world? Because it is so powerful. If we were to yeah. hit a critical mass of, of women who were really in their power, how does that transform things? Well, first of all, women have enough confidence to step up their game and to really start leading the way from uh, a more you know, connected, collaborative, compassionate, uh, and nature respecting uh, aspect. So more female leaders, more female business owners, more innovators, um, hopefully more women in politics and just really in, in management positions and women that are really looked up to and that have a say. Uh, so, yeah. And, you know, this is, again, something that I see happen over and over uh, with women in my courses. Once they tap into that sexual energy, it's so liberating that they finally are having enough courage to stand up in a toxic relationship and um, say, no, this isn't my boundary or even leave those relationships altogether. So I do have one of women divorcing or splitting after the course when they came to the realization it's not serving them. I have women, you know, moving countries. I have women starting businesses just in the last call. I love that uh, a few days ago, one of the women shared that after all this work, she just started speaking her truth to everyone and she called the CEO of the company complaining why she didn't get a bonus for last year uh, because she hit the numbers. And uh, yeah, the CEO requested re review and they got back to her saying there was a mistake, they're sorry and that they're indeed granting her that bonus. Uh, and you know, I have tons of stories like that. Um, and I know I, you know, probably even you can see it within all the women that you're interviewing, right? Who, and I, you can see this now, and I love this trend, although, you know, it can be a little triggering and annoying, but there is this whole new wave of coaches and female leader and online space that are earning millions and making a, a bigger and bigger impact. And I love that. We need more of these powerful women who are having businesses that more than anything, prioritize making a positive change. And on top of that, they earn great money. Hell yes to that. <laughs> Sex and money. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. rel they're pretty linked. Yeah, um, exactly. And yeah. then, you know, we all know that, you know, there's this beautiful book, Shakti Leadership, right? That mm. we women naturally are more open for collaboration rather than competition that we are more connected to nature and will make more decisions that respect nature uh, that we just are more empathetic uh, and you know will kind of bring more soul to 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 business in general more soul more compassion more empathy i love that i mean and i what i what i really love is that it's it's it is about women 
And it's also about just the feminine, the essence of, of what is feminine and that making a rise exactly energetically that. on our planet. And whether that shows up in, in men, that would be great too. Not Absolutely. that men become more feminine necessarily, but that they honor the feminine, that they honor that, that energy and that ethic of the feminine. Um, yeah, I love that. And I love everything when I think about like sacred economics and, and new paradigm mm -hmm. business and all of these things, it is an infusion of, of, of feminine ethos into mm -hmm. our world, into everything that we do. When I try to think like, how can I do business differently that, that is more in alignment with um, an awakening planet or a new mm -hmm. paradigm planet? What a lot of that, how I try to think of that is like, okay, well, how can I look to nature? What are the rhythms of nature and how can I make my business and my life more in alignment with those rhythms of nature? That is an inherently feminine way of looking at things because our bodies are literally mm -hmm. like calibrated to the moon when Absolutely. left untouched by hormones. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Can you share some um, about your story and how you came to be in this, mm -hmm. in this role that you've got? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I shared the story quite a bit, but let's just shortly bring it because, again, it actually starts with me being in that corporate world with which I thought was not compassionate, not soulful, not respectful of nature or not, res you know, just completely like disconnected. And I, because I grew up in communism, I wanted to have enough money and opportunities to travel the world. So I decided I'm gonna start study finance and banking. That seemed like, you know, working for a big international bank or a McKinsey kind of company, consulting, etc. So I went studied something that would give me that opportunity and I did end up in a big corporate uh, company and I stayed in the corporate world for 15 years. And I earned a lot of money. I was traveling and moving and I lived in Sydney, New York, Mexico City, Sao Paulo, you name it. And, but my soul was empty and my, I never felt fulfilled and my heart was not singing and I was just going there to earn money. And even though it was a lot of money, it just slowly started to, I slowly started to die on the inside. And uh, yeah, and until I hit a mini, you know, a mini uh, midlife crisis. <laughs> and I was so unhappy and I was so negative. I only started attracting more negative events in my life. And then I remember just one rainy day in Sao Paulo, I woke up and I looked at the mirror and I say, I don't like the person that I'm looking at. I don't want to spend time with her. And uh, I, that needs to change. And that was this moment that I did a click. And from there it went. I... Um, basically started my kind of spiritual path or discovery path. I was like, okay, so I have the Rolex, I have the Gucci bag, I'm flying on private jets and I'm not happy. So the answer is not there. So where is the answer? And uh, I kind of finally quit my job after 15 years, embarked on a journey and started to do all different things from Osho Ashram in India, Vipassana meditation, medicinal plants, meditation courses, books, positive psychology, et cetera, et cetera. So I stumbled upon a course on conscious sexuality where my energy awakened and I had my first full body orgasm. And without even knowing exactly what happened, the energy remained turned on. And I started to have those energetical orgasm experiences. And it was so powerful, so beautiful that I was like, okay, I want to understand what's happening here. So that's where I started digging. And all the explanations seemed really easy for me. Okay, this is not such a rocket science. And I guess, you know, it was easier because first I had the energy moved, which is the most tricky part. And then I started to uh, understand the theory behind it. Uh, but my conclusion was like, this is not so complicated. Why the hell no one is teaching us that? And at the beginning, I literally was so excited about all these, you know, full body orgasms and what was happening in my body that I couldn't stop talking about it. I wouldn't shut up. So I would talk to everyone about it and people started coming back. Yeah. Hey, after you told me about full body and the shaking and this and that, I think I just had a full body orgasm last night. And then the second person came and third person came. And after a few people came, I was like, okay, interesting. 
just even talking about it already plant seeds and things are happening that's where i started giving my first talks and from there it you know it, it went on and people started coming back and asking for more and yeah uh and that's what i've been doing for the last few years <laughs> well and you've got quite the following. I mean, you're, you're obviously there's something about the way that you're presenting this information that's mm. really, really resonating with people. Yeah. I think we know what, what I get from comments from people. I think the fact that I was in the corporate world and I'm quite logical and structured and I'm very practical. Um, this is how my delivery of, you know, those teachings are, uh, because they're not necessarily, I don't invent the wheel uh conscious sexuality has been there for hundreds of years and the tools are quite similar but again each teacher the same as with yoga has their own way of delivering it my is definitely structured and uh practical and with a dose of humor and i've been told that this is what people really resonate with and i, I think that's why i also especially have people from uh the business world that are opening up to that because I speak their language and I come from their background. So I'm not just a hippie who were sitting under the tree and, you know, I don't know, whatever <laughs> the perception is, but okay. I'm a person who was in business for 15 years. So I come from their world uh, and that makes me um, I, more, more relatable, I guess. Plus in my human design, I have my throat chakra activated so apparently when i speak people resonate and get inspired so that's another reason i guess <laughs> i mean it sounds like you're you're a bridge you know mm -hmm. and, and absolutely and like, like you could you could go into corporate boardrooms and and teach these things and how amazing oh, would that totally. be and if, i did if if like almost... major corporate companies oh, were to oh. hire you if maybe they already do they, they should mm -hmm to come and talk to them because if people are having full body orgasms before they go into the office, they are going to be yeah. on fire. Yeah, no. <laughs> Although and I they might quit their job. Of, yeah. <laughs> I work with a lot of business owners and organizations like YPO or EO, where these are all the CEOs, the owners of big companies, and they're super open and ready to learn. And I love working with those people, because then we can really start to have a domino effect and scale the process of change. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I, I mean that you can have such a huge impact that way when you, when you have that kind of access, because I don't think there, I don't know, I might be wrong, but I don't think there are a whole lot of, of people who teach this type of content, the conscious sexuality, who would also be able to resonate really deeply with um, a corporate audience. So that's a really unique, um, a unique niche that you fill. Yeah, I guess. I mean, there's more and more teachers teaching it, luckily, yeah. because definitely we, we, we need more, we need more teachers and we need more inspiration when it comes to sexuality. So uh, I'm, there might be some other teachers, but yeah, it's still a relatively new area and we're just opening up to that. So I'm super excited to see how it all evolves. So as we're sort of like making steps towards that, cause we want to like mm -hmm. move towards having a world where more and more women and men, I think ha are, are mm -hmm. um, entering into this place of like conscious sexuality and more and more couples. What are some, like, are there any tips that you can give to, to the listeners of like how they can move in that direction? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do we want to start? Okay. Let's start. Let's give some generic tips. So first of all, I would start with an intention and it all starts with an intention. So what is your intention? What is your desire around your sexuality? What do you want it to be? <laughs> and once there's an intention of, oh, I want to explore it more, or I want to uh, bring more awareness to this, or I want to work with my trauma, or I want to, whatever that is, start with a clear intention because it all starts from there okay once you have an intention then create a space for that and create space for exploration for learning i personally i am a fast learner i love to learn this is how i thrive and everything from sports six languages 
conscious sexuality, you name it. I, and when there's, you know, I'm a default yes to anything new, anything excited, I will jump into it. And one thing that I have experienced myself and how I have been able to learn, you know, six languages and 17 sports and all that is that I realize I don't have to do it all myself. I don't have to figure it out myself. So is it a book? Is it a podcast? Is it a course? There, we have access to all this. Uh, in the book, Stealing Fire, uh, Stephen Kotler and other two co-authors talk about it. We are first time in the history that we have access to this information. Before it was hidden from the masses and it was only available to the emperor or kings or those in powers or those with money, right? For the first time, everyone has access. Everyone who has access to internet, or can buy a book has access to this information. So let's take advantage of that. Even if not my course, there are other teachers, there are, you know, there are webinars, there's so much. So you don't have to figure it out yourself. Reach out for support for someone who has been dedicating themselves or their whole life to that. Now, making again a space in your life for conscious sexuality. Conscious sexuality requires awareness in the body, requires time requires you being comfortable with whatever is going to come up. So it's probably not going to be uh, an equivalent of a five minute rubbing the clit or a five minute fast slam bam, thank you, mom, uh, penetration. There is time needed for those experiences. So I would start literally scheduling time in your calendar. And I know a lot of people have a resistance towards this, but I always say we schedule a dentist, we schedule a tax appointment, we schedule dinners with friends and so many other things, yet we don't schedule time to prioritize ourselves. So are you alone? You, I'm going to invite you just after this, you listen to this podcast to put a one hour self-pleasure practice in your calendar. If you're listening to this as a couple, I would love you to put a two-hour session as a couple in your calendar. I recommend once a week, if this seems completely out of reach, schedule something that is realistic for you. Maybe every two weeks, bi-weekly, or once a month, whatever it is. But I want you to put this in your calendar so you can start focusing and on that. And when focus goes, energy flows. <laughs> then I would love you to start bringing uh, some elements of spirituality into your sex life. And if you're listening to this podcast, I assume that you probably somewhere on your journey, right? Uh, and you know how to do a little bit of breath work, you know how to meditate, you know how to set a sacred space, you know how to slow down and start moving your body and, and bringing some awareness to sensations in the body. So start bringing all those tools into the bed. Are you with yourself? Are you with your partner? Because we already have a lot of those tools. We just don't put the two together, right? Probably most of the listeners practice yoga, right? So you are doing meditation practices. You are observing your mind. You are breathing pranayamas. You are engaging your pelvic floor through engaging and activating your mula bandha, bring all that into your sexual experience. Combine it with slowing down instead of being in your head, instead of watching pornography, having tons of fantasies, focus on sensations in your body and let the body take the lead. Um, these are some of the great steps how to start. <laughs> I love that. And I love the assignment to all listeners to right now, as mm -hmm. soon as possible, get, I'm going to do it, mm -hmm. um, Beautiful. get on your calendar and, and stick. I mean, I'm a single mom. So like, I, I, I have to find like little quick moments here and there, you know? So I like no, the but idea. little quick moments are not going to do it. It's not That's the same no point. Yeah. So I love, I love it. I mean, I have, believe me, I've got my, I've got my, mm -hmm. my long luxurious times too, but I like the Beautiful. idea of putting it on the calendar and like really making sure that that's going to happen. Um, yeah. especially, yeah, for us business owners that have our, our, all of our time sort of blocked. Yeah. Um, I think it's really, really cool. And then, you know, especially as women, often I hear women complaining that, oh, you know, a man just got into fast friction oriented slam bam. Thank you, mom. And they're not taking time to 
to have beautiful, delicious, yummy foreplay, et cetera, et cetera. And I always ask, are you taking time with yourself to do all that? Because if you're not, how can you uh, expect this from your partner? It all starts with ourselves, right? So we also can start bringing this way of relating to our bodies, starting with our self-pleasure practice. Yeah, I love that. And I'm totally going to, to um, put that on my calendar. What I was going to say, sorry, my kid just got home, which is hilarious because of what mm -hmm. we're talking about. Um, <laughs> Indy, okay. hold on one second. Okay. Um, he's home early. Anyway. Okay, done. Going to do it. Now be quiet. So now I have a kid who just walked in. This is totally like single mm -hmm. mom, entrepreneur, running a podcast about sexuality and her kid walks in. I love it. It's so much fun. Anyway, he's used to me. So what I was going to say is we we block an hour off. What was I going to say about that though? Oh, middle of the day. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of all of us putting this somewhere where you wouldn't necessarily always put it because that's I feel like my task is like maybe not early in the morning, you know, although mm, that's good too when my kid gets home or maybe not late at night after I'm really exhausted and just really want to mm -hmm. go to bed. But what about in the middle of the day and like yeah. as opposed to like a lunch break, like a pleasure break, an hour long like date with myself. I think that would be epic. Yeah, I mean, now that we are mostly working from home, it probably would be a little bit more challenging back in the day, pre-pandemic, if you are commuting one hour to your office and one hour back to find this one hour lunch break time for self-pleasure. But now I guess it absolutely is an option. I personally love, again, in the evenings, I'm also quite tired, especially when we live in the tropics, right? uh the heat and everything you are quite exhausted in the evening but i love morning practice and i love morning practice without necessarily having a climax orgasm and i call it putting on that erotic glow when you bring yourself to high level of arousal or medium level of arousal and then just let your body um enjoy those sensations that you know high or medium arousal state and breathe into it and walk out the door like that with that you know, irresistible glow in your eyes. And it's just like that energy, um, the juiciness that is going to follow you throughout the day. Perfect. Um, do you have like a certain kind of music that you put on? Oh, hell yes. I have playlists yeah. for everything. Yeah. <laughs> in, all my, in all my courses and, you know, I am a sensual lover. Sensuality is key for me. So sensual touch and the smell and the sound and movement. I'm so much into that. So I love to set different vibes and different ambience. And yeah, even in my courses, every module, you get a new playlist and they are completely different. One is a little bit more wild. Another one is more slow and soft. And another one is more, I don't know, energizing. So yes. Amazing. I love that. I mean, I, I love that each module of yours has a different playlist. So you can kind of embody a different sexual archetype. Absolutely. And yeah. we even talk about archetypes and yes, how the sound is such a profound, you know, tool that we can use. And there's so much emotions, memories, there's so much connected to that, that, uh, yeah, I absolutely love to play with the power of sound. So since you just mentioned your courses, I wonder if you can talk to us about your offerings and what you like, how it is to work with you. Yeah. So again, you know, I think I'm, I'm following the trend, but now I understand the trend myself. Uh, working in online containers is so powerful because number one, you can touch more people's lives and you can create a beautiful community. And then when people come together and realize they're actually going through the same challenges and struggles, it's so inspiring and so empowering and so supportive. Uh, so I love online containers when it comes to sexuality. And I know a lot of people are like, yeah, but I'd rather have a session in person. Yes, but in session in person, we're probably not going to go into naked stuff. And I also am going to just have a couple of hours. Well, in the online containers, we have 10 weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, and we can really go deep. And you can turn off your Zoom camera and we absolutely can dive into, you know, genital stimulation, et cetera, et cetera. And then I can offer you audios and videos. So 
why one of my favorite containers is called Ladder to Bliss. It's 12 weeks, um, kind of a mentorship group. I call it the mastermind for female body, for women. Uh, there is a self-paced course for women, five weeks called Orgasmic Embrace. There is Ecstatic Lovers Codes for couples. Um, <laughs> so these are great places to start with. And I also give one-on-one -on -one in-person sessions here in Tulum or when I travel, there are also retreats for women. I just came from one uh, in Costa Rica. So we do this together with my other um, girlfriends. We go facilitate those two, three times a year. So that's another way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I take very few one-on-one -on -one clients. So um, what's the best way for people to find you? I mean, obviously Instagram. Obviously Instagram, although we should all be having now a different way because things are happening. So yes, Instagram and because of my very challenging Polish surname and uh, just in general complicated name, I have this funky uh, handle, which is Planet BB, Planet B-I-B-I. -I. Uh, but you can also just simply type in energeticlovemaking.com and it will redirect you to my difficult name um, URL. So energeticlovemaking.com uh, and you can go to my website and find me there. Amazing. Well, I, um, I'm hoping that lots of people come flocking to you because I believe <laughs> in your soul's purpose and your mission for everybody, as many people as possible to have full body orgasms. Hell yeah. Um, so again, for anyone who's listening, because I like to, you know, I like to give tangible takeaways from those kind of podcasts. Uh, and yes, so ladies, gentlemen, anyone listening, I invite you to just a few minutes after we finish here, schedule time for self-pleasure, one hour with yourself, two hours with your partner. You're going to think of your intentions. You are going to slow down. You're going to start with a little movement. And you can get some of my sexy playlists, again, on, on my Instagram link in bio. So a little movement, bring a bit of breath and sound, then go into a little meditation, scan your body for sensations, and tap into your body instead of the mind. So mind and body are two biggest sexual organs. We, it's easy to use the mind. We all know how to do that. But let's try to focus on the body more. So the entire body, not just the genitals. Ladies, starts with your breast. Really caress, touch, play, pinch, scratch your entire body. Stay with the breath and sound. So you're going to relax more and more. The more and more relaxed you are, the more receptive to pleasure. And only then start with genital stimulation. And don't run after the orgasm. Build a little bit of it. To a, to a low level of arousal, pause, breathe, stay with it, enjoy it. Then go a little bit more to a medium level of arousal and allow yourself to serve that wave for an hour and without any expectations, without even having to have a climax at the end and just see what happens. Are you alone or with your partner? Same, same prescription, same principles. What's your philosophy on toys? Ha, that's a good one. And there is not a consensus on this one. I am, I am, for, and again, I am not a fan of clitoral vibrators because again, there is a very divided opinions on this. So I'll just leave listeners to feel into uh, their own intuition and just observe what happens for them in the body. I have women coming over and over again to me saying that they really don't feel much in the clit anymore because they got used to such a high vibration for penis or poor hand. Nothing can really compete uh, with that. So if any vibrators, then I would say G-spot vibrator. Uh, now, I am a big fan of holistic toys. So JDEG or Crystal Wands, these are the toys that I absolutely recommend and uh, support. And I have seen again over and over again such a beautiful, powerful result. Uh, and there's something in the crystal that brings the sacredness from the get go. And, you know, we uh, are most probably going to go slower and be more aware. And, uh, and yeah, so much magic, so much, you know, 
orgasmicness that can come from practicing JDEG and, and Crystal One practices. So that's my favorite toys. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love the but crystals. Yeah, crystal ones, it's so funny. All women in my courses always, when we go into the crystal wand, everyone was like, oh my Lord, why no one told me about this before? Why am I 40 and no one told me about the crystal wand before? Um, so yeah, here we are. I really recommend them. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing so much of, of who you are and what you do and your soul's purpose. I really appreciate it. And um, it's so powerful. I'm really yeah. grateful. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for uh, fighting and you know supporting the new paradigm and all this powerful, inspiring women that are guests on your podcast. And yeah, and being a single, inspiring mom on top of that, uh, because so many women are stopped by that. Uh, so it's beautiful to see you uh, follow your passion. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I feel like to, to raise the next generation, we, we've got to start building the new paradigm with them. Yeah, so absolutely. That's... Uh -huh. <laughs> Congratulations, love. Thank you so much. And um, thank you all for listening. Sending yeah. you all so much love and sexual power. Wishing you an orgasmic week. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>